everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about how building muscle will actually build your brain and protect you from cognitive decline. Also, later in the episode, Justin talks about his brush with paranormal activity. It's quite scary, and he was quite afraid. Stay tuned to find out about that. In the second half of this episode, the guys coach four live callers on questions such as, what can I do to get stronger at the squat? What is the number one thing I can do in the gym to help me with all of my fitness goals? And finally, I have a high stress life. How should I best be training to get the maximum results? Finally, are you interested in specific topics such as how to lose fat, how to build muscle, how to get a better night's sleep. Well, we have the answer for you over at our Mind Pump Clips channel where we have short clips that will go into details on all those topics and more. Go over, subscribe, and enjoy. All right, here comes the show. Probably the best thing you could do to have a healthy brain is to have healthy muscles. In other words, healthy muscles equal healthy brain. I like that. Yes. Mm. So cool uh, study came out. Uh, it was an analysis of many studies, right? So I love this, right? When they look at lots of different studies and they look at uh, what each of the studies say or whatever. And, and Do you think that should be a, a standard, like as far as before you you take like a uh, a study and run with it and like, oh, this is this is fact or this is how we should we should we should go in this direction? Do you think that you need a, a, a meta analysis first before we make? critical decisions like that? What's your thought on that? Yeah, I would say generally speaking, that's uh, one of the highest standards, right? So you'll have your your gold standard, which is your double-blind placebo-controlled study, meaning- In um, humans. Researchers, yeah, on humans. Researchers plus participants don't know who's getting what, so everybody's blind to it. Placebo-controlled, meaning you know one group gets nothing, so you can so that's the control group. You want to have a large sample size, um, and that's re representative. So, you know, men, women, different ages. Like there's so, there's so there's different levels of what you would consider. Yeah, that's a study we can really take to heart or one that's maybe not so good or whatever. But then you have analysis of multiple studies right. uh, mm -hmm. where that's probably the highest standard where you're looking and seeing the most truth. And I, I do want to say that this, you know, this particular study that looked at all these different studies echoes what... Um, other studies have, have seen, observational studies have seen, other data kind of points to. But what this what it said was essentially they compared multiple forms of exercise. Okay. So cardiovascular exercise, walking, swimming, biking, strength training. Mm. And they looked at the results on cognitive health, um, in particular at preventing cognitive decline. And what they found was by leaps and bounds, strength training is the best form of exercise to prevent cognitive decline. Now, I talked about this in uh, the Resistance Training Revolution. Um, there was a, a study done out of Australia where they saw that strength training prevented the buildup of beta amyloid plaques in the brain. Now, we know that the beta amyloid plaques aren't, aren't what cause. We're now learning that's not what causes Alzheimer's or dementia, but there is some kind of a connection as to you know, maybe what's causing that may cause. But nonetheless, it's the only non-medical intervention really shown to do that. And there's a lot of theories as to why. And one of the prevailing ones, the one that I subscribe to, is that what you find with people who have dementia and Alzheimer's and other types of cognitive impairments is two things. One, there's a very, very high connection between that and issues with blood sugar. So diabetes mm -hmm. or you know insulin issues. Uh, and number two, when people do have cognitive impairment, they tend to get improvements in cognitive performance when you put them on a ketogenic diet. Ketogenic diet meaning you eliminate carbohydrates completely, body runs off of ketones, and you tend to see this improvement in cognition. And the brain is, you know, it's a thirsty organ and it does utilize glucose. And so this is why a lot of scientists you know, some scientists and researchers call Alzheimer's like type three diabetes. So what's this have to do with strain training? Your muscles, your muscles are one of the ways you store glycogen. <clears throat> glycogen comes from sugar and carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Your muscles are super insulin sensitive. So building muscle really improves your body's ability 
to utilize carbohydrates and to be sensitive to insulin. Would you would you say something like by building muscle you're you're building these bigger reserve tanks? Absolutely. A hundred percent. The liver is and where the you store more muscle. of them that we build, the more reserve that you have, which in turn more protective. In and that. you lose muscle and you become weak, you lose insulin sensitivity. <clears throat> you lose that that storage capacity for glycogen. So it's another study that shows that strength training for longevity purposes. Now, it's not the only form of exercise and other forms of exercise. All of them have benefit. But what's funny to me is that strength training forever was kind of relegated to like the bottom, the bottom of the list, mm -hmm. right? It's like doctors forever now, when they'd recommend you go work out for health, for longevity, it Walking, was everything running. else. Yeah. It was never strength training. Vascular for the most part. Turns out strength training is in many cases superior. It's the best. Mm -hmm. And this one now is showing for cognitive. And you know what else is funny? What form of exercise was connected to being dumb? Yeah. Yeah. Strength training. Yeah, meatheads. So funny. Right. It's so weird, right? It's so hilarious. So like you want to have a healthy brain, have healthy muscles. You have healthy now, muscles, you're you're more much more likely to have a healthy brain. Now that to that point, and what's really interesting, and it's kind of cool that this this came out. Uh, we're right in the middle of our launch of our MAPS 15 program. And what comes to mind to me when I when I think of research like this and and reaching the general population. Is the is the way it will be communicated will be different than to your point about the meatheads, the dumb like like you got this you have this extreme level of fitness people that are the you know the jacked hardcore fitness yeah. train for beast mode hour hour and a half workouts and and although there's tremendous benefit health benefits for being building a strong lean body. I think when you see research like this, I think what is going to be more appealing to the average person is that you can get a lot of these cognitive benefits with very minimal effort in that direction. Bro, you mm -hmm. hit the nail on the head so right. hard it's not even funny. The the one of the, the the hallmarks of strength training, one of the things that makes it so valuable is how little time you need to spend doing it to get this huge result. No other form of exercise will show health and longevity benefits that are exponentially larger than the time being spent. So they, they'll do studies Well, they'll have somebody, there was a recent one that we talked about on the podcast where people did one eccentric loaded movement a day on their biceps and they saw significant strength of muscle gains. Now, are you going to look like a bodybuilder or a physique competitor doing that? No. But for longevity purposes, literally, here's how I predict it's going to be communicated and I Really hope we can save this clip because I love nothing more. You guys know this. I love telling people I told you so. <laughs> we, we love, yeah, future predictions. It's my most annoying trait, but I enjoy doing it. It's uh, They're going to communicate this to people. Uh, do uh, one or two strength training movements a day. That's what they're going to tell people. Yeah. Because the, the benefits of strength training have nothing to do with the calories being burned while you're doing it. It's all about the adaptation that it triggers. And it really doesn't take much to cause those adaptations. So if somebody did... <clears throat> You know, like MAPS 15, right? You did 15 minutes a day. Uh, that's uh, 105 minutes a week, right? Mm -hmm. So that's roughly two 50-minute workouts a week if you were to take, devote to, right, to right. Right? 15 minutes a day. Even if you did 10 minutes a day. Right. 10 minutes is 70 minutes. Tell me one form of exercise where you did 70 minutes a week. No. Right. That would reap all those tremendous benefits. So it's it's literally the, the, exercise, the form of exercise – that I predict the medical community will promote more than any other. Will be now, did one. they, in this meta-analysis, did they define a healthy muscle? Like, in terms of, like, its strength capacity, in terms of size, in terms of, like, you know, lean mass versus fat mass with these individuals, like, what was sort of the determination there? It was so I don't know what their speci specific parameters what were. Are you I, know, I don't understand what you're asking because he's talking about having a healthy muscle. Like what is that? Yeah, like what does that consist of in terms of like because let's say somebody just does cardiovascular training all the time right. and they still have a real lean physique, but right. like you know might not have necessarily the size uh, and capacity uh, of like you. a bigger yeah. muscle. So okay. it's, it's strength and muscle size, but I do want to say this that like with all uh, forms of performance. Um, there's this like, uh, th this bell curve, right? Where a little bit, you'll get a little bit of results. Then there's this like, this is where you get a lot of longevity results. But then when it gets extreme, you get diminishing returns. So like- It's like what we know, talked about with Stan, right? Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. like, you know, being strong and having good muscle shape and, and some size or some good muscle development is good. 
being a pro bodybuilder, well, you're probably going to lose. You're going to get diminishing returns. Or being strong is good, yeah. but devoting your life to squatting 500 pounds or 600 well, that, pounds. Well, like you're, you're pushing yeah, the threshold of what your Correct. body's comfortable with. Well, Correct. I mean, this 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 argument that you're making right now is was kind of the motivation behind me moving in this 15 to 20 minute direction currently in my life. And I think I brought that up the other day when we, when we launched yeah. the program, I was saying that, you know, I, I actually feel really good. Some of the best I've ever felt in my life by no means am I in the best aesthetic shape, but my, my focus is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And so my thought process of like following this kind of real short workouts was, well, listen, what, what if my goal really wasn't to, to sculpt or shape myself to look a certain way and purely was kind of longevity focused, what would my training look like? And that's when I started to do that. Now, the thing that was interesting to me that I w was blown away by was how, how much strength I was still maintaining and how much muscle I was still maintaining. That was the part that was really interesting. Now, I speculated that I obviously have decades of consistent high volume training for a long time. And so I'm sure that is playing a factor into why I, I feel it's so beneficial. Well, I'm so, okay. So here's what I, this again, I had this to bring up too. There was a study that showed that talked about how much, how much strength training was required to maintain, mm. right? Cause there's building and then there's maintaining. And uh, one of the, again, another, another great uh, factor or characteristic of strength training is that in other forms of exercise don't offer this, that, you know, if you build a certain amount of muscle and strength, it doesn't take a lot to keep it. Other forms of exercise, you, if you cut down, you'll lose a lot of performance. You'll lose a lot of the health benefits at some point, right? Yeah. Uh, with strength training, there was a study that showed that with- That young, was last year, right? The one and one seventh or something like that? Is well, that no, there's another one oh. that showed that younger lifters- could maintain their muscle strength and size with one workout a week. For 32 weeks, the study went. Oh. 32 weeks. Wow. wow. Younger lifters. Now, they theorize that older lifters may need uh, a little more to main strength, maintain muscle and strength. Also, it depends how extreme you are. So if you're like a bodybuilder, probably going to lose muscle going down to once a week. But these were guys that worked out, you know, three days a week, you know. Kind See, of that's like interesting because I feel the opposite. I feel this that, is speculation. I agree with you. Yeah, I think I, the older you get, the easier it is to keep. That's yeah, what I, think. I, I, I think that. Or it's, should I say, the longer you had that muscle, the easier it is to keep. Yeah, like because I remember in my early twenties having you know these bouts of you know say weeks in a row. Maybe even I've had some uh, I think times in my life, or maybe I even went a couple months of like inconsistently or not training. <laughs> And uh, I felt like I lost a lot of it. And then trying to get it back uh, took a lot of work. Where I'm at now, I feel it takes very little to get myself back to what I would have considered in 25 was great shit. Yeah. When I worked really, really hard and consistently to build in my mid-20s, I feel like little effort towards training and some tightening up the diet, and I can I can build that physique. You know, there's another factor there too, Adam, is, um, is that – a lot of people, when they stop working out or they work out less, their diet tends to change mm -hmm. quite a bit. So there's that role that's, that's being yeah, played. That's, so that's like, a, if, like, like oh, I'm not lifting weights. I'm gonna, my protein intake is going to go down and stuff like that. So that'll that'll kind of you know play play a role. But yeah, this is just another study that shows that once you build, because I mean, God, I used to hate this question that I would get from new members. So I thought it was so silly, but I get it. Like, you guys ever have new members come up to you and be like, "Yeah, but once I build it." What happens when I stop working out? And I look at them like, what the hell is that? Obviously, you're going to lose whatever. But I get it, right? I get yeah. what, why people are saying that. Yeah. Um, strength training, I mean, nothing's permanent. But it's one of the most permanent forms of exercise when it comes to certain results. What you'll lose if you go from training four days a week to one day a week, you'll keep a lot or most of the muscle and strength. What you'll lose is probably work capacity. You'll lose some stamina. Like you go from one day a week back to four, you'll probably get sore. You know, you'll probably not have as much stamina and endurance go real fast. Yeah. Strength sticks around for yeah. a little while. So when you add all that up, like I'm telling you right now, we're like maybe five to 10 years away from the medical community literally being like, hey, you, you go do like two or three strength training exercises a day. That's what we want you to do. How easy is that going to be for the average person, by the way? What's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway. MAPS 15 Minutes, the brand new program we just launched. You can get it for free. Here's how you win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all of those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. That's the only place we're going to notify you if you win. 
and you'll get free access to Maps 15 Minutes. Now, everybody else, this is still in the launch phase. There's two days left for the sale and the free giveaway. So if you want to sign up for Maps 15, if you do it in the next 48 hours, you get it for $20 off, plus you get two free eBooks, The Power of Sleep and the Occlusion Training Guide. Oh, and by the way, we threw in a bonus advanced version for those of you that want to do a daily short barbell free weight-based workout. So that's all in there. Again, over the next 48 hours, after that, it ends, goes up in price. You don't get the eBooks and all the free stuff. Anyway, if you're interested, go to maps15minutes.com and then use the coupon code 15 special for the discount and the free giveaways. All right, here comes the show. We just did an episode, right, on on our new program, Maps 15, which is 15 minutes a day. And then what we did is we included an advanced version because for some people, you know, 20, 25 minutes is more appropriate. People have been working on a long time. Already starting controversy. And I knew this would happen. <laughs> you would get all the hardcore lifters. You can't do that. That's not going to do anything. That's really where it's going to come from, right? Yeah. yeah. Everybody that's like married to this idea that you have to be in the gym for an hour, like every single day. Uh, and, you know, to reduce that down to what we're talking about, it's like blasphemy. Yeah. Well, you know what it is? They've done more damage than good because of their. St- okay. So I'll tell you guys, I'll tell you some stories about when I first became a trainer that I know you guys did the same thing. I know this. When I first became a trainer, I must have talked so many people out of working out. <laughs> yeah. Because what they needed to commit to. Yeah. Because they'd come in and be like, oh, I can only work out one yeah, day a week yeah. or no, I can't do that. And I'd be like, well, then, you know, and I, my, because my, my goal was to get everybody to work out every day. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, be all super dedicated fitness fanatic like me. And so I would be like, well, you know, you should actually, and I'd try and hype and motivate them. You got to make more time. You make more time in the day for your health. You get more time. You'll be a better parent. You'll be whatever. Everybody has the same 24 hours a day. I do this whole speech. And I would end up talking people out of it because they'd come in being like, you know, I'm just going to do like one day a week to start. And then after I told them all the shit, they'd be like, well, I'm, I'm, why am I, one day a week's not, it's not going to do anything for me. I'm just not going to do anything. So I think we've done more damage than good. So these meatheads and, you know, yeah. these fitness fanatics that, that are debating this, it's like, listen, you're not helping anybody, by the way. Look, I don't need to tell the fanatical fitness person, yeah. I don't need to convince them to work out 20 minutes a day. They're going to do more you're than they need to. do whatever you're going to do anyway. Yeah. In fact, I need to convince them to not overtrain so much. Yeah. I'm talking to the average person who follows this pattern of you're talking about on, the other off, on, you're talking off. about the other 85 percent of the world yeah or more <laughs> yeah <laughs> the majority bro yeah no I've always I mean we've said this since the beginning that that was the uh, you know the bone we had to pick with the the fitness space was just that you know we've been communicating to ourselves for, for <laughs> so, so long, for so long you know all fighting over the latest studies and. Who's on the who's on the most recent cutting edge shit? Meanwhile, losing a majority of the population because the majority of the people don't think that's for them. That they don't they see that, yep. and and there's there's a there is a sliver of people that see that and aspire and wish they could be that way. But there's actually a big percentage of people like I don't fucking want that. Most I don't think, want that yeah, life. Think about that shift of a lifestyle where all they see is like they're so dedicated that they are literally in there like six seven days a week. Yeah, you know for all this time and, and they're goal is to increase that amount of time increase the amount of load increase the volume Mm. like everything is just like this trajectory of like a gajillion more things to add onto the list and so it's to your average person they're like oh my god i'm already doing a lot i don't want to add all this other stuff no no no. what what does the average person want this is what the average person wants they want to feel better move better they want to be generally lean you know i know everybody like i want a six-pack Look, most people don't want a six pack. They, most people just want to look fit and healthy. Most people don't want to look like bodybuilders or whatever. Yeah. Most people don't want exercise to be their life. Yeah. They want exercise to complement their life, yeah. right? What if I told you yeah. you only had to work out 15 minutes <laughs> yeah, and get a so six pack? That's right. <laughs> You know, and people won't take the pill. Yeah, that's that's it. So no, I want this. Yeah, so it's like it's it's hilarious to me. And we are look, we're failing. We are failing. Fitness industry, you suck at selling this to the average person. You guys keep talking to each other, a bunch of fitness fanatics, you know, in a circle jerk, talking about how great (laughs) you guys are, how hardcore you are. Meanwhile, obesity is increasing. And here's what's even funnier: the people that do try to exercise, the average person. What percentage of them actually pick up strength training? Yeah. A small, even smaller percentage. Why? Because we did a shitty job selling it. Yeah. So you know that's the and the the truth is is the opposite of what people think. Literally, a little bit goes a long way. Gets your faster metabolism, better insulin sensitivity, uh, improves your cognitive you know, cognitive health, or at least at the very least, is it efficiency should be the goal. 
right? Totally. Well, yeah, to, to do what is just necessary to get the results and then free yourself up to do everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. protective against a sedentary lifestyle. You're going to yeah. sit down most of your life, let's be honest. You know, light jobs are all sedentary. Like, you have some muscle. That'll that'll protect you. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. So I have a, a, a funny story for our, our Caldera commercial uh, today. So I'm talking to Katrina. This has actually just happened, like, maybe two, three days ago. And Katrina gets this call from her old VP that used to work for JJ Albany. So Katrina used to work for a big construction company, one of the largest construction companies in the Bay Area. Uh, you know, and, and just a bunch of old rugged dudes. She fit right into that group. I mean, you guys know her personality and stuff. And so they absolutely loved her and they continue to still talk to her and check up on her. And she hadn't heard from this VP in quite some time. And he sent a text message like, oh my God, Adam's famous. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> like they just so, figured that yeah, out. Yeah, so he's like, call me. And so she she calls him and stuff like that. Hey, how you doing? I haven't talked to you forever. And they catch up. He's like, I'm on, I think I don't know if he was watching TV or he was on his on one of his you know iPads or phones or like that. And I guess he got a, a, a Caldera commercial. I guess I guess he's into face serum. Obviously, like he got targeted. <laughs> which, I thought that part was funny when she told me that. So this obviously, he's in the construction. Yeah, dude. I know he's a, I know he's a rugged construction guy, but he obviously yeah. cares about his skin because he got targeted by Caldera somehow. But yeah, yeah I guess the feed popped like, up. I'm and it was hard, but I'm also it was youthful. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> it was yeah. our our commercial. I think that we hard we, muscle, soft face. <laughs> that we it. did for them. He's so. like, Adam's famous, and he looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah. you see yeah. that they came out? Yeah. Okay, so I'm we, listening. So we yeah. just got this, uh, their eye serum. I haven't tried it yet. This new thing for the eyes. Doug so will guess, be all over that right well, away. Well, I mean. I've already used it. Oh, okay. you did oh, already? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, look oh, at Doug's eyes right now. I know. Yeah. You might have used too much, Doug. You look like a baby right now. Yeah. You're going backwards. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually excited to use it because I feel like that's what I, around my eyes is where I notice the most. When I look back at pictures and I compare to that's like That's like now, the old, yeah, it happens to everybody. You get these little bags. Yeah. Like, I even noticed that you guys notice like like it it day to day it fluctuates like a good night's rest and oh like, yeah like I, I, I can I never noticed that before yeah. like literally this is new to me this is like new in the last year or two I like see like I can look ten years older or younger by how I slept and how my, my, my <laughs> yeah. around my eyes looked. Dude. I never noticed dude, that. You know what I'm saying? I'm never like I squint oh my God, so much dude. I guarantee I'm gonna have like like just wrinkles just. <laughs> <laughs> right here, just yeah, but you'll look you'll look distinguished though. You know what I mean? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, look at that face. Ooh. Anyway, well, they're doing a good job. Obviously, yeah. I like how they're putting us out. You know yeah. what I mean? On their commercial. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's good for our, uh, our uh, what is that, exposure? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is now the second or the third one. A, a Viore one happened last time. Caldera, there was another one where random people that are connected to Katrina and I have now made this connection like, oh my God. Mind pump is huge because mm. I seen them on like a stupid ad. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so uh, yeah. funny to me. Oh, that's what it was. It was a text message I got from Viore. Somebody being like, oh my God, you guys are so big. I'm like, we've been working, we were working with Viore like damn near five years ago. <laughs> it's like, but because they put us out on ads, now random dude, people are dude, seeing speaking it. Speaking of you, the, 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 what was that? The IG live you did? Oh, with Chris. Nagir uh, how do you yeah. say his name? You, Nagibi. Nagibi. Yeah. Wow. Great job. Did you like what, it? What a great You're discussion. not blowing smoke on my ass. No. <laughs> first off, if you sucked, I would be. I know. Really I happy do feel that way. You. I actually, I actually told Chris yeah, you that you suck because Chris, he, Chris was messaging me. You didn't watch it, did you watch it? Or I no? watched. I was on. I hopped on and off a bunch of times. Oh, you yeah. did. Okay, you were going to talk shit. You, did you see me on there? I was no, like, I know better shit. than I know, dude. If I'm uh, if I'm like business, no, that's why I was like, I, yeah. I can't pay attention to you fucks because I, I know figured. you guys are trying to throw me off. I was totally trying. Hey, people don't even know this. Half the time, I'll be on an interview because I do a lot of interviews, and Adam will be at the window over there, and he'll be flashing me his butt cheeks, yeah, like that. Time. Try and get yeah, me to crack. Yeah. So if I see your guys' names pop up, I'm you like, know we're messing. Yeah, with I'm you. not even gonna pay. I'm not gonna pay attention. Yep. But Chris asked me uh, my feedback. I said, you know, uh, Sal said it was really good. I said he actually commented, he texted me. I said, um, and we're we're very critical of each other. I, I guarantee if it was crappy, he'd be quick to tell me that it wasn't good. But yeah, it was a great uh, great conversation. Um, it was a really good discussion. He does a great job. Obviously, this is his element. You did a phenomenal job of asking great questions and communicating mm -hmm. things I think the average person would be interested in when it comes to financial health and the economy. Mm -hmm. Really valuable. A lot of valuable takeaway. I think sometimes when you listen to uh, finance podcasts or stuff like that, it gets, it gets to a point where it's a little, it's not high level is the wrong word. It's communicated in a way where the average person is like, huh? You lose yeah. me. Yeah, you lost me or I'm not interested. It's just boring. Yeah, it that's, was that's great. Where I'm at. It yeah. was really good. So that was my desired outcome. And for content creators, you know, out there, like, you know, this is like a, a page out of the, you know, uh, you know, Gary Vee is really good at this. Patrick Bet David's really good at this. 
you know, this is a conversation I'm having anyways. And so this is what really inspired me to do. It's like, you know what? I'm, I'm so into that conversation. I'm, I have friends in that space that I, I respect and look up to that. I'm, I'm calling them anyways and going, Hey, this is what we're thinking about doing. We're, we're, we're thinking about saving this or investing this or pulling out or what do you think that? Mm -hmm. And like, and so I'm already having these dynamic conversations anyways. I thought, you know what, here's a cool way potentially to add value to our audience that they would, that maybe they would get the the same value I feel I'm getting out of it. So you plan, you're going to do this Somewhat regularly. So we're going to start it bi-weekly right now. So I'm going to do it again in another, what? so by the time this airs, another week or so, it'll come out. It'll be on Friday afternoon. I will leave it live for 24 hours and then I'll pull it down. And the the, the reason for that, because people will oh, just leave it up there forever. Well, one, I don't want it on my wall. My wall's for me and my pictures and my family and stuff. So I don't want, it's a business thing. I'm going to put it up there and it's, if it continues to do as well as it did and it grows, then it may turn into something. You know, maybe we turn it into. I like, think we should have him on the show. Yeah, he's really, really good at communicating. Oh, he'd love that. I mean, some I, of that stuff. Super smart guy, but he does it. He, he communicates it in a very, very good way, which you, is so important. Do you know that? I do you know how. Like, you know, he got inspired by what we did in the fitness space, right? So he found us like six years I ago. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, you didn't know that. So no. he he's been he's been following us since Shreds days. <laughs> yeah, so he's been following wow. us since almost the very, very beginning, and we inspired him to build his platform. Oh, wow. So he's not monetizing anything he's doing. He's He does well in, in the banking and real estate. He's got all kinds of stuff going on. He's a lawyer, so he's got a, a great back. He's already fine financially. So he didn't build it to try and make money off it. What he wanted to do was disrupt the financial space because there's a lot of grifters. There's a lot of guys out there that are that have got a lot of fame from being, you know, whatever, giving out advice, and they're making money off of people. And a lot of the advice they give you know, lines their pockets. And so he's inspired to disrupt that shit. You know, what's funny as I, you know, as I think about it, because, you know, one thing I always say is that the fitness space or the health space, right? You can put weight loss in there is like 98% just bullshit, terrible information. The make money space has got to be as oh, bad or man. worse. That's how we could, we most con- charlatans. We yeah. connected on our mutual uh, disgust for masterminds <laughs> that was like our thing that was the thing that we like we kind of originally hit it off on because like we both just can't stand that because it's such low hanging fruit and i know there's somebody out there just like and listen i i can sell you a mastermind too i could also sell you on how i see the value in it right there's something to be said about getting in the room about getting gaining access to people that have already failed a hundred times ahead of you and you can learn from them i'm not so yeah. i i understand that the part that has never sat well, I think, with any of us is that you know that the success rate of entrepreneurship is less than 20%. Mm-hmm. So when you fill these rooms up with a thousand people paying you thousands of dollars, you know there is a only a small margin, very, very small margin of people that are going to be successful. And by the way, that small margin of people that are going to be successful arguably would have been successful regardless if they showed up to your fucking event, right. which is why they highlight individuals instead of saying a percentage. You'll never hear a mastermind go like this. 10 out of ten out of 15 people no. that come through our mastermind. Let's say John maybe, here. Yes. Yeah. Here's John. John is a millionaire now Killing because we it. helped him yeah. out. Yeah. And it's like, well, John was going to be a and fucking millionaire. And we taught him how to create his own mastermind, yes, which right. then fractions hey. off to his mastermind. Hey, and then his guy's got a mastermind. Listen, I was a 15-year-old kid. I'd been working for a year at this point, saving my money, stay up late, watch late night television, what comes on, how to, you know, those, you know, get how to make money, you know, infomercials. And I bought like three of them. I bought, there was Don LaPree was one. There's small ads in newspapers. I don't know if Doug remembers this guy. (laughs) Then there was another guy named Tom Vu. He was, I think he was Vietnamese. I remember Tom Vu on the boats. On the boats. Yeah, Yeah, little hot chicks. Yeah, dude. I love Tom Vu. Have you seen Tom Vu, Doug? Oh, bro. Oh, my God. I can't believe you. That was a what a throwback. Be like me, Tom Vu. Beautiful women. Oh, my God. What a good throwback. (laughs) Yeah, look at me. Gold chain. Angie, you don't know nothing about that, do you? Oh, pull this up. You got to pull up Tom Vu. I don't even know if you'll find it. He had yachts. Yes, you will. Oh, yes, you will. I bet you old, old clips are Tom Vu on YouTube will be up here. That, I bought his shit, someone else's. And I realized, like, this was I early, early days, I realized this. The way that these guys made their money is teaching people how to make money. They didn't make money before. That's right. Like, these are full of shit. Yeah. That was after the third one that you I know, bought. Yeah, that, <laughs> I'm so glad you brought him up because this is- this is, is You went to jail, by the way. This is old. This has been around forever. No, oh, it's, yeah. it, it's just right now, it's crazy on social media. Because how quickly you can rise to fame on social media and- How quickly you can apparently or appear to rise to right, fame. Right, right. So oh, you have- dude. 
you have these people fronting, yeah. and then they then they teach people how to make that money. And what and then what's crazy is they were, they were <laughs> look at him. There he is, yes, bro. Yes. Tom Vu and his babes. <laughs> bro, I fell for that <laughs> shit. <Yes. laughs> I, I was it. poor. Now would look you, at hey, me. I was poor. Now, okay, would you say, would you say he's the OG of doing that? No. Like who who did what it was before? Was a Riffle Wall Street guy. What was his name again? Oh no, but oh, he, he, he did Tom Vu's older than that. Yeah. He's older than that. Oh yeah, he, this is way this is like eighties, dude. Bro, Tom oh. Vu. He first he would say shit like like Look at me. I used to be poor. Now look, beautiful women. Yeah, lots. Of, like, who did it before him? Uh, I eat steak and potato every night. You know, he'd say shit like that. Yes. You're like, what? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> who did, who did it before him? Do you know? Do you know Doug? Who, who I don't know, bro. This has been it? around forever. Huh. He, but he's one of the, I mean, the OGs. And he would do the same thing. He'd have people who who apparently made all their money yeah. because of him. Yeah. And they'd show a picture of their... But look at this commercial. He, there he is on a yacht. He was Dan Bilzerian before Dan Bilzerian. Yeah. He's, got, he's got five girls in bikinis surrounding him. You yeah. know? Yeah. He it's went to funny, jail. It's funny you bring this up because like I was having a conversation with my sister-in-law recently. And she's doing content too because she's a, an attorney to, to be able to kind of repurpose it and, and sell ways uh, to like... You know, for for divorce secrets kind of thing, and uh, you know she's going through and like looking at some of the people in the space that are selling a lot of this stuff, and she's like, Dude, "There's this like weird sense that like they're they're almost like talking to themselves yeah. as they're presenting the the material sure. to everybody." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's exactly what I know, especially with motivational speakers. It's like they're just talking to themselves to hype <laughs> themselves up and and fronting like you know this is what got them success when they're just." literally climbing Dude. up off of your money that's putting it yeah. there. Do you remember do you guys remember this annoyed the shit out of me and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna annoy a bunch of people watching this right now, but that's fine. Do you guys remember that book The Secret came out? Yes. Yeah. And everybody was talking about if you just think about it and envision it. Yeah. yeah. Hold on a second. And then it'll happen. manifested. And then yeah. I remember yeah. like what the f and it was like Oprah was doing it and all these people were doing yeah. it. I'm like, oh, I don't know if it works that way, bro. I think you got to think about it. I but think then you got to put work in. Go that's bust uh, your ass. That's all, that's all uh, Scientology stuff. Yeah. And did you are, you, are you still following the Grant Cardone stuff that came out? Is there new stuff out? No, yeah, I've been following. I'm still following it. Like he's uh -oh. came out and commented back on it. Yeah, he. Why well, I, I, did I share on the podcast this? De defending. I don't himself? think you ever uh -oh. shared on the podcast. Yeah, this know. was off, off air. We talked about this um, about how he was how he's making his money. How he basically finds a property and tells his, you know, people that he's gathering all their money, right? That, oh, I've got this incredible investment. And he tells them uh, a price that is inflated from what he can actually get it so at. So he automatically makes money. So he makes the, the cream off. And he's already got built in a percentage, I, I, like 1% he makes. So the people, so I like I would give him, and I believe Lewis House has given him money and some other people we know have given him money. So you give him, let's say we gave him $100,000 of our money, he in the contract says I'm gonna charge you one percent for basically a finder's fee. Right. Okay, that's fine because right. you're you're guaranteeing. But he's I'm making gonna, more than that because he because you're buying it off him. Yeah, he he's making one percent off the price he tells us, and then he goes around and he gets it for a lower price. Now, what we don't know, and it, what I don't know, is how much of what he's doing is technically. Wait, is it legal. proven that that's what happened? Oh yeah. Oh, so it's a hundred percent. Oh yeah, happened. that that for sure is happening. What what what. We don't know, and it's, he's been in and out of court with all this stuff, wow. is if it's technically illegal. And because in his contract, if the way he's set, structured it and worded it, that he could technically do that. Hmm. So I, that's the part where he may get off and it will be no big deal is because if he structured it correctly and covered his ass, which I'm, he probably did, I'm sure he had lawyers that help him put it together right. so that if it did go to court that they can't. Because so I, I watched the court case. So I actually, you can watch it on YouTube. There's, really? Yeah, yeah, I'll share oh, it with wow. you guys. There's clips of the of, of them fit. trying to yeah. uh, nail him down, and and you see the judges going well, like, we so can't here's, prove it. Here's what I find interesting mm. with this some of the stuff because be like, well, it's not illegal. <laughs> well, look, if, if you if you base your morality off the laws, it, you're right. fucked. Right. That's not how it works. So there's a lot of stuff that's not illegal. But is it? Is it yeah. ethical? Is it ethical? Is it the way to to do business? Yeah, I don't know. That's the question. Speaking of ripoffs and stuff like that, shocking news: Beyond Meat is cutting. A huge segment of the oh, workforce. Oh, that was on my yeah. So apparently, so you know, it's apparently. So hear me out, guys. This is just this is just a business lesson I just learned. Apparently, if you take a product and then make a copy of that product that's not the same and less healthy for you and worse, 
Hmm. You'll suck. And you won't it doesn't last. Yeah, weird. Apparently, yeah. Since, since you brought that up, I want to bring up something that. Uh, let me read it. So because, a fake burger. Yeah. That doesn't quite taste as good as a burger. That's also well, less healthy. I saw. Not gonna make money. Somebody DM me. They were at uh, Tough Mudder and they're handing out like Beyond Meat jerky, and I was like, Beyond Meat jerky. Oh, oh we wow, were tagged in that. I saw that. That is interesting. <laughs> I was like, and they're excited. I'm like, look at the ingredient. How many ingredients do they have to use to be able to create? something that's kind of that consistency and like me it's like it's pretty crazy it's weird yeah i mean when this when that a lot of hype first happened and it was really based off of hype we knew we knew we said it on the podcast not gonna work huge failure yeah stupid so speaking of companies uh, that suck um <laughs> a great great transition do you guys remember do you guys remember who michael burry is Ooh, no yeah, you do. He's the guy who predict. You do watch. We, I guarantee you, he'll know after go. I say this. He's Predicted the guy who predicted. Yes, he, yes, he predicted the big short. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the one who was famous. Big he short. short. He shorted all the companies, and yeah. he, uh, he he made a fuck ton of money. The off movie him. was based off him. That's right, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that's it. so. I, I, have you heard anything what he's been talking about right now? Like he's he's pulled everything out of the oh, stock that's market. That's nice. Okay, that makes me feel good. So <laughs> here's here's something super interesting that I didn't know, and I actually to give credit where it's due, I I think I heard. Patrick Bet David reference it first, and then I went and uh, looked up his tweet, and then looked up what he had said about it, and the articles around it, and thought, "Wow, this is super interesting," and I didn't even know this. So he tweeted out, "This was just not that long ago, <clears throat> last month. This morning, there th th there were still 218 primary stock listings in the United States with a market cap of over one billion and EBITDA less than negative 100 million. 29 of them had market caps over 10 billion, totaling 655 billion. Saying it again, all this still, okay. Meaning you've got over 200 companies that are supposed to be worth billions of dollars that are turning in numbers of being negative hundreds of millions of dollars. Wow. So think about wow. that for a second. That's a, that's a, that's a skewed market. Huge. Signal, which you're, you're waiting for a correction. Huge. They have to match. I didn't something. know that. I think yeah. that's 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 super fascinating to me. Your billion dollar market cap, so you have billion dollar companies that we all look up to and go, oh, they're worth billions of dollars. They're amazing. They're like they're impenetrable. They're amazing. Yet they're turning in negative hundred million dollar earnings for the year. That's crazy. Yeah, wow. is that not crazy? So you, in other words, pretty alarming. In, in other words, we're not potentially bouncing along the bottom, but rather probably going to go down further. Which is why he's pulled out completely. He pulled everything out. Oh yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> well, that sucks. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know. I but I didn't know that. I hadn't heard that before, and had and I know I know that. Okay, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad company, right? We have examples of companies like Netflix that ran in the red for years before it became profitable. There's plenty of companies that yeah. a lot of tech that, companies, yeah. But that's a bit alarming, right? Yeah. I mean, I feel like, but those are anomalies. Netflix. Like you're right. Yeah. yeah. When you're talking about 200 plus companies, you know what happens is we, when we start to see new businesses or a new type of market, this happened during the dot com crash too. <laughs> we investors start to think that the old rules don't apply. Oh, this is different. No, no, no. This is different. This is tech that never existed before. Or this is users. There's users. It's information. It's different. But the old rules always <laughs> prove to be true no mm -hmm. matter what. With, with business. So maybe that's what's happening. Maybe these are a lot of these tech companies with lots of promise. You know, like when they give, uh, you know, I hate to keep hammering uh, uh, Tonal, but it's like Tonal's valuation based off of this, that, and the other. And, right. and we look yeah, at it and so go, no, we know how potential, yeah. fitness users work and yeah. th how what this is going to look like. And so, yeah. Well, I think this highlights, it, you know, to your, and that's why I brought it up with the conversation around the the staff cut 14 percent by beyond meat or whatever i mean we're seeing this across the board on all the big companies all the big companies i mean facebook just said they're yeah. they put a hiring freeze everybody's putting a, these companies haven't slowed down hiring uh since almost they existed yeah it began and now they're freezing that which tells you that they are forecasting a, a, a bumpy road ahead so it's i don't think it's here yet i think it's going to get worse before it gets better in the next year to two years we're going to and I don't, so I, during that conversation, and if you heard me, like, I don't necessarily think we're going to see an 08 crash, but I think it's going to be just this 
I think we're going to slowly see it go down and down and down and yep, down, and yep, it's going to yep. be. A, and you might see these little, you know, not not to not to add fuel to this negative fire, no, but I'm crapped out. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not to make everybody shit. <laughs> well, we'll, listen, we'll get hey, positive. Well, here, let me tell you the positive. But it's reality. Let me tell you the positive spin about this. Actually, this is when the best companies are built. Of course, this is when the 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 most creative the most creative companies are yeah. are are built are in times like this. This is when wealth. Is created yeah. right now too. Yeah. So the opportunities that will happen is in the next year. This when acquisition goes way up to in terms of like businesses acquiring other businesses, and you just wash out. You yeah. wash out malinvestment, malinvestment, and smart people realize that things are on sale. So yeah. what do I mean by that? Well, after two thousand eight, you know, I'm in the Bay Area here, right? So the, the housing market here is ridiculous. But after two thousand eight, we had a big drop in home prices here too. And I remember after two thousand eight, lots of investors came in and started buying up properties, knowing that everything's quote unquote on sale. Yeah. And so they were just buying them up left and right. right. Mm. And they made a killing because mm. then the market kind of rebounded. So uh, <coughs> well, we'll see. speaking of properties, I guess this is kind of weird transition, but like, so I, I was at the house by myself this, this weekend and, um, so you look so rested and I, I feel great. Stress free. <laughs> I, <feel great. laughs> I, I had a whole me time. Like it was so much me time. I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, and so I was like watching TV and you guys know my history of the house having like certain issues in terms of like spiritual things and more and haunting oh my God. things. And Is there whatnot. more ghost stuff? So there's one. Yeah. So, okay. So I was sitting on the couch and, um, the dogs were with me and, and Courtney and the kids are gone. And, uh, so I was just watching TV and I, all of a sudden I hear this like, bam, on the front door and, I was like, what? And the, and the dogs just like got up real quick, started barking, running towards the door. And it literally like sounded like somebody threw something heavy and just like slammed it into the door. And uh, and I was like all kind of, oh, what the hell was that? Was <laughs> like, that night, daytime? When night. Was oh, was that night? Nighttime. And uh, I go out, nothing, nothing outside at all. I mean, I have a little bit of a decoration that fell as a result. It was just this little like door knocker, like skeleton thing that fell off the door, but l like not even close to the noise of what like occurred. And so I was just like, ah, that was really weird and whatever, no big deal. I'm going to kind of go back to watching my movie and just you know, hope for the best. <laughs> just kind of ignore it, you know, like kind of move on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then it just kept like getting at me. I'm like, Oh, like, like that was so creepy. Like, what was that? Like, it, and so I text Courtney cause we have that ring camera. Yeah. I'm like, maybe she caught something, you know, oh, on, shit. on the ring camera. And so she was like, what? Oh. So she checked it out and was like, I don't know. I was waiting. I'm like, what was it? And, uh, so it turns out we have this dog, uh, next door that comes to hang out with our dogs all the time, just randomly. And he just like beelined it to the front door, hit his paws on and knocked like all the decorations down and then just bolted and like left. <laughs> really? Yeah. For no reason, bro. That's scared bro, the got, shit out of me. So, so good. So good that you had ring though. Bro, you, you got doorbell, oh, you got doorbell yeah. dish by a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. He, yeah. he like shits on the so stuff. random. <laughs> like that I wouldn't even that wouldn't even cross my mind. Is that like that was a thing? A that dog was... came and bounced. Yeah, like why did he do that, dude? And like he so, freaked everybody okay, out. So have you guys? So have you guys noticed this? This is a dad thing. This is such a dad thing. I hope because maybe it's just me, but I hope it's not, <laughs> it's not just me. If I'm home and my kids or my or my wife or everybody's home yeah. and I hear a noise. I go into vigilant, mode. aggressive, protective yeah. mode, yeah. fearless, yeah. whatever's there. You're by yourself. Just yeah, you're by yourself. Blade. You're scared. When I'm by myself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, though. Because yeah, you don't gotta help. Yeah. Truth. I'm like, I'm that's like, I'm gonna ignore it. What is know? that? Like, what is, like, what is that? I mean, there, there's a hundred percent. That's true. Hundred percent. You're by yourself. And my like, kid, if my kids oh, there. My wife is there. I am fucking dad mode. Right. I'm looking for a knife. I'm looking for something. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm going towards the sound. I'm by myself. I'm like. <laughs> Pretending yeah, that didn't yeah. happen, like Hi. oh yeah, ch tell, talking to yourself like oh that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah Hide like, under the I'm covers. exaggerating something. <laughs> you know, like it wasn't that bad. What a weird phenomenon that is. Isn't that funny? That is a weird. It's phenomenon. so if I'm by myself and I hear weird noises and shit, yeah, yeah. I start to get scared. Yeah, when I, I got the think kids. to go grab yeah, yeah, yeah. any kind of weapon or nothing. I'm no, just, just like just 
Is that you know, when on you the couch? Is that this. when you texted us? You want to come over? Yeah. <laughs> Can I, you just want to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> Can I come over your house real quick, please? Hey, yeah. how about how about our uh, our experience on Friday of trying to do a, uh, our first uh, what's Riverside call? Oh, uh, our our po- our distance <laughs> podcast. Shit show. Yeah. You know what's weird hey, about that? Yeah. What's weird about that is the the, 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 the producer had the hardest. Time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The guy who knows how to do this yeah. the most and all the That's all right, Doug. I had my issues too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sal and I were good to go. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. The one guy that was the for sure. I know you guys. If we put a bet, money in a hat, yeah. who would not figure this out? Yeah. It would be me. Dude, it's I was irony, good. bro. 100%. I know. Yeah. That's just how that goes. Look at Doug. Yeah. Doesn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no comment. Dude. It's like it's like Doug showing well, us how to work out. You know what's fu- yeah, it was funny about that. Is I totally motivated. I went and like got Got a bunch of stuff to like stands and like all these things to try and like get myself really set up because oh, yeah. like that irritates me, dude. Like if I'm not like in a good place with technology, yeah. like it eats at me. And so, and then on top of that, I went and got a bunch of music stuff and was just down there like, what'd you get? Getting loud and crazy. You and Doug blowing some money this yeah, weekend, I just, huh? I, w- I don't know what. I, w- I just I got like this crazy spark, and I was like, I'm just gonna do it because I need some like creative juice. And it was like, I left and was like, I had that like buyer's remorse like immediately, but then I put it to action. And I was like, Oh my God, it was oh. so great. It was so much creativity. And now like everybody's back and I can't get loud. Good for you guys. So. I never hear either one of you guys blow money. That was like the first time. You guys dude. never, you never, you guys never just go yeah. let loose. And I blow still money. feel a little about it. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Dude, you're funny. Totally dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Doug came in today with his Louis Vuitton purse. I was like, what <laughs> That's nice, bro. <laughs> blingy. He matches real, my real jacket. Blingy. <laughs> <laughs> Doug is bougie time. like that yeah. for sure. Yeah. Dude, That's I got I got to say this right. So this happened again to me this weekend. Had a, had a rough weekend. I'll tell you guys. I'll tell the audience why in just a second. But uh, I needed something to eat or whatever. And you know when shit stressful stuff happens, I forget to eat or whatever. So I went into Whole Foods, grabbed. Uh, just some plant protein that they had. And the, you know, plant protein is disgusting. Always, <laughs> every time, it's gross. terrible. It tastes like grass clippings. Yeah. I don't care how they flavor it. It's gross, which makes me appreciate Organifi even more. Well, I remember it was the big, it was one of the big selling points. I don't know what they do to their plant protein. It's all their products. All their products, dude. Yeah. All their products are fire. They taste, they, they did such a good. No artificial sweeteners either. I know. Yeah. They did, they did such a good job of, of making all their products taste good and they're, and and it's good. Because of all the proteins you can buy, plant protein is almost always the most disgusting. Yeah. And it's, I mean, a lot of them I try had like heavy on the soy. There was a lot of soy in a lot of the other like ones. I No, Organifi doesn't use soy. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. No, they don't. don't. No, which, which, you know, there's controversy. I mean, yeah. Like I just don't, I just prefer not to If you, if you know what, they even say for pregnant women to that soy is okay, but not to go too heavy yeah, on soy, it's, it's like an excess because of the phytoestrogens. Mm-hmm. Because there's potential that there there could be a, a a very mild and weak yet you know <clears throat> estrogenic effect from the soy. Anyway, what ha- so this weekend you know um, uh, and maybe what we maybe we have to edit this out because I don't know I'll, I'll see if I can talk about it. But so my grandfather passed away yeah. this weekend, uh, ninety one years old, and uh, really really tough for for you know thing for the family. He's uh, you know you guys you know I talked yeah. about him turning ninety. A year ago, and it was kind of a big deal. But anyway, you know, it makes you think a lot about certain things, and um, you know, it's really crazy. I was having this conversation with Jessica. So my grandfather, man, when I it, we're all together, so my, my whole family just convened together. We're all at my aunt's house. It was like at any given moment, 30, 40 people there, and we're gonna have people flying in from Italy and Israel. He's got family in Florida, Chicago, New York. Wow. So a lot of people are gonna be coming in. And, you know, we just start, you know, you start telling the stories, typically what happens if you ever lost somebody, it's usually the conversations start to revolve around stories and stuff. And, um, man, what a, what a crazy life, you know, my grandfather, um, when he was a, he was a boy. So this is your mom's side, right? my mom's dad, uh, 11, maybe 11 years old, 12 years old. He, they were so poor that he used to hop on trains in Sicily, no ticket. So he'd have to sneak on trains. <coughs> to go to other towns to find ways to make money to bring back to uh, his mom. So he would be gone for two, three days. You're a young boy yeah. doing that kind of stuff. Then he gets married. He marries my grandmother. She, he was 19. She was 16. They get married. She gets pregnant. 
And he again, the Sicily during that time was very, very, and they were poor, and Sicily was very poor, especially. So he went to Venezuela of all places. I think he he you know he, he heard. Now what's crazy about this? My cousin and I were talking about this. I couldn't imagine today with the technology that we have, Google, internet, you know, translating, whatever. Imagine going to another country. You don't speak anything. You don't know. Oh, you don't know anybody. Crazy, crazy. And you got to figure it out. You just got to figure it out. You got to hustle, right? That's what he did. He took a boat, went to Venezuela, lived there for two years, slept on a dirt floor, and would send money back to my grandmother. Went back to Sicily. Uh, she got pregnant. Had my mom. Could still couldn't find work again. It was that went back to Venezuela, did it again. Then asked. Then had my grandmother come back on on a ship. And just figured out how to make his way in this country. And what's, you know, my grandfather, uh, just a very unique, um, just a tough, unique individual, um, very loving to his grandkids. You know, he was a very proud Sicilian, but he was even, even more proud American. I remember, you know, t I was talking about this with the family. And as a kid, even my, grandpa my grandfather, who, you know, he spoke broken English, but he would always say, God, God bless America. It's the greatest country in the world. It's the great. And, and I know why. It's because he went all over and he was able to make it yeah. in this country and raise his four kids. And then we went to his house and, uh, you know, he was the first first and only owner of that house. Oh, wow. Yeah, he bought it in the 1960s for $23,000. <laughs> wow. Twenty. That, what, that house now so is awesome. you know, 1.7. Do, do you know what, like, his first break was? I mean, it sounds like he was, like, challenged. It, when, like, it was just a grind. It was just a grind. The it whole was, time was a grind. Always, you know. he he. Uh, when my mom was little... He uh, he was a custodian at 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 a, at school at a school, and that night he would clean movie theaters, and he would bring the family with him at night. And my my mom, when she was you know seven eight whatever, her brother who was ten or my grandma, they would help clean movie theaters till midnight. And oh. then he'd go home, and then he'd work in the school, and then he'd come back, pick him up, bring him back, and they so he could spend time with them. Wow, basically, wow, and they clean movie theaters every single night. Wow. Yeah, it's was it, that here in San Jose? Like San Jose. Oh wow. Yeah. Like the centuries or what would you remember? Yeah. Oh, really were, yeah, centuries. The old, centuries, the old huh? ones. Oh, no know? shit. I think he did uh I think he would clean. I think the centuries and I think maybe even the drive-ins, he would do the parking. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but really interesting. And and also, you know, another thing too, we were talking about my he was so proud of his garden. So he has a regular house, right? Track house. And I mean fruit trees <clears throat> and vegetables, all he planted every single one. And my grandfather was so proud of those things. And it makes sense when you realize how he grew up. Sure. To have your own tree that bore fruit, it's a big deal to my grandfather. So, I mean, you know, that's how he passed away. He went to his house against his kids' wishes. And uh, no, if you know my grandfather, you know, you can't tell him. Yeah, there's no talking about What to do. Yeah. He's a grown man. So he's 91 years old. Right. I think it's funny when people, you know, think that they can control uh you know somebody that age or whatever he was sharp of mind too so it wasn't like you know you had to control him because he did, he was sharp yeah but uh he went home and you know he was doing his gardening or whatever and blowing that you know doing blowing the leaves and tending to his stuff and we could see if he had the you know ring camera or whatever but you know he died in his home how he always wanted to go so very very tough time but the family's all together and um you know my grandfather for the last god at least the last six or seven years when he when we would get together he'd tell me that um, you know, he wants me to say. He always said, you know, Salvatore, when I die, I want you to say something nice about me. And he goes, and I want my grandsons to carry me. I want to make sure my grandsons carry me all the way. So he's got seven grandsons, so oh, wow. we're all gonna. You be said there. that picture of all of you guys. That yeah. was all, all, all seven. That's of you guys. the that's the grandsons. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Grand but he had, I think, thirteen grandsons. And I think sixteen great grandchildren, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. If I'm not mistaken, wow. legacy. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's just he started. And it's just, again, it's crazy to me. I can't believe, my grandma was telling stories about when she gave birth to my aunt. Cause my aunt, my mom, my, my mom's younger sister was the first one born in this country. And, uh, my grandma, neither one of them spoke English, didn't know, whatever. She's like, my, so my grandma's telling me this. She goes, you know, your, 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 your nono took us to the, to the hospital and he, he, he was speaking Spanish. So he learned Spanish cause he lived in Venezuela, right? For a few years. And you know, here in, in California, if you're not going to speak English, the, the, you're more likely to find somebody who speaks Spanish. Right. So he's trying to find somebody, <coughs> talking to everybody, whatever. And and he eventually found a doctor that spoke Italian, was able to deliver oh, wow. my aunt. But that was my grandfather. He, 
could talk. He everywhere you went, he knew somebody. Always knew somebody. And I know, and it makes sense. He had mm-hmm. to figure out how to hustle and how to make shit happen because he knew nobody. He was here by himself with you know with my grandma. It's really crazy. So wild. Yeah, crazy story. So that'll be the um, original. Yeah, that'll be a tough time, but it'll get everybody together. I know there's gonna be a lot of people show up for that. Oh, yeah. So good stuff. Hey, check this out. Want to meet us live? Want to come to Mind Pump Studios? Check out the gym and the studio where we record all the magic, the place that Justin and Adam like to hang out and do cool stuff. It's a great place. Come check us out. Mind Pump Live. It's our first live event since all that craziness happened a few years ago. I'm not going to mention it. Don't want to get taken off the internet, but you guys know it was crazy, but we're back. Go to mindpumplive.com. Get yourself a ticket. Show up. Meet us in person. Tell us why you love us. We love it. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Jackie from Ohio. Hey, Jackie, how can we help you? So first off, just like everybody else, I want to thank you guys because you guys have definitely given me my life back and not having to run one to two hours a day. Um, I actually gave your advice a try and definitely gave me back some of my time. So I appreciate that. But secondly, I'd like to defend my future profession a little bit because you guys talk some shit on uh, the dentistry, dental uh, profession. (laughs) That was Adam. (laughs) That was Adam. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not all out to get people. There are some bad eggs in any industry, but you know, I've been waiting. There's some bad trainers. I've been too. waiting for this. I knew somebody was going to get my ass. <laughs> Dent- that one, He's so. like, dentists are a hoax. <laughs> Every single right. one. Yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry about Wanna that. Keep your teeth. <laughs> Um, I have an appointment next week, just so you know. Just so you know, I have an appointment next week. See, there you go. Preventive care. Just like trying to prevent problems. That's the best way to do it. For sure. All right. So um, my question is, is it normal for a front and a back squat to be almost equal or is there an imbalance I should be um, addressing? I tried to address it by isolating the quads and the hamstrings on the leg extension and then on the hamstring curl machine, which I don't use machines very often. But whenever I did that, my quads were a little bit more like stronger, which is normal. But then my quads or my hamstrings were right behind it. So I'm not sure if maybe they're too equal and I need to boost up my quad strength or where I should go from there. Yeah. Okay. So good question. So, um, so two things, it's not common for a back squat and a front squat to be the same or similar, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's a quote unquote imbalance or a problem. Uh, imbalances or issues, uh, tend to cause pain or tend to cause mobility issues. So unless you're feeling pain or your mobility is suffering, it's not really something that I would worry about. And I'd point to um, Olympic lifters uh, as a good example. Olympic lifters, and, and, and this has a lot to do with the fact that they practice lots of front-loaded squats. Many of them can front, front load a squat probably more than they can back squat or almost as much because of the way that they practice and train. So it's not necessarily an issue. It's just it's just not common. For example, it's, it's more common someone can deadlift more than they can squat, but there are cases where someone can squat more than they can deadlift. So it's, it's, I wouldn't worry about it unless you're feeling some kind of joint issues or pain. Are you feeling anything like that or does everything feel good? No, I definitely do mobility probably once or twice a week now and have run through Prime. Um, I haven't done Prime Pro yet, but I've done run through Prime and I did all the mobility stuff whenever I did um, performance. So I my, tip, my hips are typically very tight um, just because I do run still, um, but I make sure to address that every every workout. So my my guess would be you have a pretty upright squat and then you have a pretty strong core. How do you feel like when you squat? Do you ever feel it in your glutes or do you always feel it in your quads? So I've been trying to focus more on my glutes, but yeah, I definitely usually feel it in my quads. Um, but I've widened my stance a little bit and have gotten a little bit deeper since working on that. How, how often do you incorporate yeah. hip thrusts into your routine? Not very. Oh, that that's you got to do that. I, I would I would take I would swap out some of your back squat sets for hip thrusts and you'll probably develop the glute strength and the the posterior chain that may be why your front and back squat are so similar. So again, it doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem here. Yeah. But you may get some nice surprise benefits, development issues. You're just probably quad dominant. Yeah, you're quad you're dominant. you're a runner, okay? So you're probably already a little quad dominant because of that, and then you probably are pretty upright squatter, so you get more quads involved there. So you just you're just not getting a lot of power from your glutes. That's all. It doesn't mean it's bad or it's wrong. It just and one of the ways you could do that is to be like is to get into like hip thrust, learning to fire the glutes more. 
Uh, and you could do that. You could do pre-exhaust before you go into squat. So let's say you are going to do a back squat. I might do some, uh, just maybe two sets of hip thrusts right before, just to prime the glutes really well before I go into my squats. And then I'm really concentrating on and, and using my glutes. I think if you get better at firing the glutes in your squat, you might start to see the back squat come up. But again, it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means you're probably a little more quad dominant when you when you squat. Yeah. How often do you deadlift? Um, at least once a week. I mean, I did with anabolic. I mean, I followed that to a T, but, um, right now I'm just kind of doing my own thing. I do it at least once a week. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm just wondering how often you hit the posterior chain. So, you know, that could be, yeah, I do those in RDLs for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, man, I, I tell you, I bet if you swapped out your, hip some thrust. of your sets of your back squat for hip thrust, mm -hmm. I bet you would notice some pretty cool butt gains from doing that because the, the hip thrust okay. is phenomenal. Barbell hip thrust and, and, and train it for strength. You know, get the reps five to six, um, and and see what you can do there. And I bet I bet you'll see some pretty good development from that. Okay, I've also moved it from a high bar to a low bar back squat to see if that's more comfortable. Because if for whatever reason the front squat is more comfortable for me, so I'm just trying to see if maybe like the different bar positioning too will help. Yeah, no, Adam sure. hit the nail on the head. Your 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 quads are 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 the main drivers with your with your squats. So uh, hitting you know changing the bar position on the back squat can help a little bit, but I think he hit the nail on the head with the with the hip thrust. I think that'll be the I think that'll be an exercise you'll benefit greatly from because it mm -hmm. seems like it's something that uh, you need to do more of. Okay. No, I appreciate that. Can I do a follow-up question like everybody tries to do? Yeah, you can. <laughs> Go for it. Sneak it in. So uh, I know the sequence is typically anabolic, then performance, then aesthetic. And since I have been a little frustrated with, I don't hit very high numbers in terms of strength because I think I've done endurance for so long that I don't have that capacity. So would it be a good idea to go into aesthetic um, in a cut like you guys have recommended before or um, just focus more on these hip thrusts and things like that for strength? So, well, it depends on your goal. I mean, you can do a cut or a bulk on any of our programs, but how, like, what's your body fat percentage at? Like, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? So I use the like home body scanner, so it's not accurate, but I'm at about 19% oh. on there. Yeah. Why are you trying to cut? What are you, what are you trying to get down to? Why not? See where, see where <laughs> <laughs> I well, just passed board. So like I have some free time to kind of, and less stress in my life so I can kind of do more aesthetic goals now. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, but I, I would, I would, I mean, if you were my client and you said, Hey Sal, what do you think I should do? I'd say, okay, if you want to cut for a little bit, we could do a few weeks of that just to see you know how you feel. And then I'd, I'd have you focus on a bulk at 19% body fat and, and like a really, you know, kind of a small uh, surplus. So maybe five to 10% above your maintenance with your calories with hip thrust and all that stuff. What you may actually find is your body fat percentage may not, may not go up through the bulk. Yeah. In fact, it might actually even go down a little. Remember body fat percentage is a percentage of your overall body weight. So if you gained three pounds of lean body mass through a small surplus and adding hip thrust, which is an exercise that may benefit you and you gain no body fat in the process, you have simultaneously lowered your body fat percentage because now you've got more lean body mass, same total body fat. You're actually a little leaner. So I, I don't mind you cutting. Just keep in mind that we're the two goals are a little conflicting, right? So if you came to me and it was like, hey, let's get let's get my back squat up, and I and I and we assessed, I right. figured it out, and I said, oh, uh, hip thrust. Let's go build those glutes. Let's get you firing there. I would want you in, a, in at least a calorie maintenance or surplus to to reap the the greatest benefits from those hip thrusts. But then you come to me and you say you want to cut. Well, then we're not going to see the same benefits from that. You you will still see some benefits from the hip thrust, no matter what. But to to maximize the benefits from that, I to Sal's point, you know, maybe I let you do like a two or three week cut, and then you know, so we can lean out a little bit, and then I say, all right, let's go back to a surplus, and let's really hit those hip thrusts and see what see what we can get from that. So I, I don't see anything wrong with wanting to do that. Just keep in mind that if you want to get the the biggest benefits from the first question. I think that I would rather you be in a maintenance or a surplus most of the time, at least. No, that makes sense. I'm just trying to get, cause I was getting frustrated with my performance in terms of like not really increasing the weight super a lot. And I get like, that's not the reason I work out, but I was just getting frustrated. So like, maybe I'll change my mindset instead of performance to maybe aesthetics and try something else out to bring up my motivation, that sort of thing. Yeah. Do you have map symmetry? I don't know. You know what? Let I me, saw it was on sale, so I was on the fence about it. But yeah, let me let me send it. Let me send you map symmetry. And what I want you to and, and what I want you to do is cut some of the volume out of the program, 
add hip thrusts, but then follow the program as it's laid out and then do a slight surplus, literally 5% to 10% above what your maintenance calories are. And, uh, okay. and then see what happens. I think you'd be, you're going to be very pleasantly surprised with a program like that and with a, a little bit of a surplus. Okay. And that, is that a five per, or 10% each day or just in the total week? I guess you can bring it up either way, but um, it's total I add like hundred each day or a hundred over the week total? It's, no, it's, it's, it's uh, try and do it every day because the, it's, okay. it's really hard to make up calories when it comes to a surplus. In other words, there's a, okay. there's a limitation to how much muscle you'll gain from being in a surplus. And it seems to be, the data seems to show about five to 10% above uh, for, for, for most people. Okay. So this is different from, you know, there's, there's obviously individual variances, but for most people, in other words, if your, your maintenance calories are 2000, you know, you'd go up to 2200 calories, but if you miss that for two or three days, it's not like you could go 600 calories above and then make up for those other days. So try and be consistent with it. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, I'll do that. All right, Jack. Thank you so much. Guys. Yeah. Thank you. And again, I apologize for Adam. <laughs> no, you're good. Just keep going. Twice a year. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. Thanks, guys. You got it. I knew that. I knew that was coming. I know. I was waiting I was for like, the. I actually was surprised it got this far. I was like, man, I talked shit. Nobody about, said that. I talked shit about Dennis like twice, and I've been waiting <laughs> for the call in yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. call you out on it. Yeah, you know what's good about this? Uh, about this point, first, it was a good question. It was a really good question, but it does highlight something where sometimes when people work out a lot, they try to find problems where they don't exist. Yeah. Now it, it turned out good because it actually got us into a good direction of exercises that'll probably benefit her. Mm -hmm. But the way she positioned the question was, oh my God, there's something is wrong there with something me. Is there imbalance? Yeah. You know? And and we don't want to necessarily do that because um unless there's like a, a, a like I said, a, a mobility issue or you start to feel pain. Um, or, or she's not developing certain muscles she wants yeah. to. I mean, I didn't, I didn't take it like problem. she was. She thought she was necessarily doing something wrong. I think that it was a really good observation, right? I yeah. think she she understood that, you know, typically it seems pretty normal to have a, a bigger back squat than a front. Mine's not. Mm -hmm. So what could it possibly be? Right, I don't right, think right. she knew how to position maybe how to ask it. It was really quick for yeah, me to realize. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, she's a runner. I mean, she's, yeah. a, she's a runner. She probably has an upright squat. She just is quad dominant. And yeah. so she's not getting a lot of the 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 benefits from her glutes, which should be the primary mover in that back squat. And so her getting better at firing the glutes, I think is going to yeah, bring very anterior driven. Yeah. I mean, even I, the back loaded squat, like positioning and everything, of course it's going to feel better, you know, with the lower uh, position on her. But back. I love, I love questions and, and, you know, obviously she's been training for quite some time. She's in pretty good damn shape. Like, and you're trying to troubleshoot, like, how can I get better? Like, I think this is a, a perfect example. It doesn't sound like she's like really complaining or thinks she's something wrong with yeah. her. I think she just, I do, I do that. think though symmetry is going to be really good for her because of yeah, the, it'll expose a lot of that. for well, sure. Well, yeah, the unilateral aspect of it, she's going to get a lot of that, that glute stabilization yep. activation with a lot of those exercises. Well, intro. Okay. How about <clears throat> something about, um, your back squat in related in relation to your front squat, or yeah, 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 yeah. trying to develop, trying to bring up your back squat or something like that. That's yeah, pretty yeah, general, yeah. and I think more. I got it. For most people, your back squat should be a lot higher than your front squat. If that's not the case, watch this. Mm, no, you don't not, like many that? People, you, not many people. Not that many way. people are in that situation. It's just say you want to get a better back squat. Everybody wants a yeah, better back squat, true. right? So, okay. Our next caller is Jenna from Missouri. Jenna, how's it going? How can we help you? Hey guys, thanks so much for uh, taking my question and having me on today. Um, you guys truly do make a difference to so many people. So I really appreciate all the content that you guys provide. Um, I actually found Mind Pump when Sal was on with Brittany Lupton back in April. Um, and I have followed you guys since. So I know I have lots of catching up to do. Cool. So a right. uh, little background about me. I'm 24 years old, 138 pounds, uh, roughly um, 22% body fat. Um, and I'm five, six, I've been working out, uh, the past five to six years. Um, the, those beginning years were really just going through the motions, not tracking anything, not paying attention to anything. You know, I was there just being active. Um, and I enjoyed being in the gym. Um, the last two to three years, I've really been trying to work on and improve my body composition. Um, as well as just ed educating myself on overall fitness. Um, so the last, uh, since January, really, um, I've been focusing on um, my goals, which are to lose some body fat, lean out, and tighten up for the long term. Um, so, and in my years of, previous years of working out, um, I've only done supersets my entire time of working out. 
which I love them. I have fun doing them. Um, and I, I've always, always been on a on the go lifestyle. So, um, they fit my routine perfectly. So, uh, as of this past January, when I wanted to transform, um, I have never pushed myself to max out before. So I couldn't tell you where my full potential is at. Um, so, and I'm not one to buy any program or spend money, but after listening to you guys and learning what you're actually about, um, I bought anabolic anesthetic. Um, so I'm getting ready to start those within the next week or two. Um, so my leading into my question, um, I noticed anabolic is a lot of upper body, which is good for the fact that I have like rounded shoulders and I've never cared about my upper body. Um, and now I do care. So, um, I'm excited to see that to, um, see the transformation of my upper body, but at the same time, I don't want to put my lower body on the back burner. So, uh, what are some ways that, um, I can, you know, keep my lower body, you know, build my lower body and what tips would you guys provide that, um, that, this beginning? That ain't going to happen. That ain't, that's not going to happen. You're going to no. be, oh no, no. Ana, no, anabolic, your, your legs, your legs and lower body are going to grow yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, okay. For sure. Okay. There's, yeah, two, yeah. there's two pieces to this that uh, I want to address. Uh, so I'll get to your, you know, maybe how you may want to modify the program in a second, but before I do, there's a common misconception when people, and it's usually women because uh, women tend to want to focus on the lower body, just like guys like to mm -hmm. focus on their chest and biceps um, with their workouts. And so they'll look at a program and they'll say, oh my God, look at all these upper body exercises versus lower body exercises. Well, you don't want to necessarily think of it that way because when you look at the lower body, you typically break it down into quads, hamstrings, glutes, and calves. So there's four major muscles right there, right? With the upper body, you have biceps, triceps. Then you have the deltoids, which are multifaceted. So, you know, they can they 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 bring you know the arms back. They can bring them forward. They can press above. Then you have the pecs. Then you have the lats. Then you have the mid back. So it seems like it's more upper body, but really because there's all these other muscles that are kind of involved with these smaller movements, and so you'll see some isolation movements involved. Whereas with right. the lower body, we'll do things like squats and deadlifts and. You might throw, you know, we'll throw in maybe a quad exercise like sissy squats or a hamstring exercise like leg curls. So it seems that way, but in reality, um, the volume is all pretty equated. And lower body exercises really have this tremendous impact on the body, like a barbell squats impact on the total body um, in terms of just sending a muscle building signal, in terms of the amount of damage and recovery that's required. Really just, I mean, a, a bench press, a row, a pull-up, just don't compare in the, in that context, okay? So the volume right. is totally equated. It is not an upper body extra, uh, workout program. It's a it's a whole body workout program. And Adam's 100% right. Okay. If you follow it as it's laid out, you'll get developed everywhere, but you're going to see your lower body okay. really develop For very sure. quickly. You'll well, see a lot of okay. strength and muscle there, especially because you, you did so many supersets before. It sounds like you like that kind of fast-paced type of workout. MAPS anabolic phase one is very strength focused, long rest in between sets. Your body's going to respond significantly in that first phase. In fact, you're going to see your strength go up quite a bit, especially because you've never really trained that way before. So now in right. terms of modification, here's what we always recommend. Um, we, we create programs for the, for, you know, a general audience. We, we tend to have an avatar when we create a program, but still we're trying to write it for a lot of people. So we encourage people to modify and individualize a program only after they followed the program the way that we've written it. So once you followed MAPS Anabolic the way that we've written it, once you get a good feel of what really good strength training programming feels like and what how your body's responding, then after that, then you can go through and start to modify and individualize and make the program you know really perfect for your body. But before you do that, follow it as it's laid out and kind of trust the process and see how your body responds. And then lastly, I'll add okay. this. I don't know if MAPS Aesthetic would be a great program for you to follow up after MAPS Anabolic. I would like to see you do something okay. like MAPS Performance after following, okay. uh, after doing MAPS Anabolic. I, ha I haven't quite looked into all of, I know you guys have so many and I haven't really like, you know, dove in to check what they're all about. Um, I'm really only familiar with those two. Okay. So, um, you, but, you, you okay. started fine. You started fine. Yeah. I think that's, that's a perfect, Anabolic is the perfect program. Now here's, here's I'm going to add some stuff to this, what Sal said. Uh, you are the type of client who, if you, I'm training you, I'm constantly grabbing your shirt and saying, sit your ass down. 
Sit yep. down, <laughs> sit your ass down, wait the full two and a half, three minutes. Stop trying to get yep. back to the bar. I, just because you think you're ready, I want you to wait. And if it's easy, then let's stack more weight on there. So that's the conversation okay. you need to have with yourself mm. the entire time that you're mm -hmm. lifting through anabolic is, I would rather see you rest too long than not enough because you're so used to doing that quick superset type of circuit type training. So sit your ass right. down, mm -hmm. put more weight on there, focus on focus on getting strong and adding weight to the bar. That's your main focus in there. Now, I'm not that okay. a, I'm not that opposed to you going to aesthetic second even though Sal said it. we wrote them with the intent that you go anabolic performance aesthetic. So that is the ideal you know 1 2 okay. 3 as far as the order of programs. The way aesthetic is written, though, is for somebody like you, which what you're asking. I still would want you to run anabolic first, at least. And I do think performance would benefit you to do that next. But aesthetic is when we start really getting into sculpting the body. So let's say you and I have been training for a while. You run anabolic. You you like the re you like the results, but then you're like, ah, Adam, I still want you know more butt, or I want more quad, or more hamstring. I want more in my legs. In aesthetic, we teach you how to develop a specific area on your body. So you pick one to two muscles, say your glutes and your hamstrings, and they become your focus days in that program to help bring. And basically, all we're doing is teaching you how to build volume into your program to build up or to bring up a lagging body part. So that program was written specifically mm -hmm. uh, to help you sculpt and build the body and look the way you want, but I still would want anabolic. You got to start you, with You anabolic. could technically <laughs> do that a little bit in the trigger sessions, but I think um, the biggest point that Adam brought up that I think you need to consider is like going into that program, your mindset towards it, because you've been so focused on the super setting uh, to be able mm -hmm. to really like go through the rest periods as it's laid out and, and then focus more on intensifying by adding load. So, so, you know, that's something too. It's like, okay. um, you know, some of my clients, I really had to spend a lot of time just focusing on that specifically because of the circuit training and the tendency to want to just keep going, going, going. Uh, I really think that that's going to be a mental uh, challenge for you going into this program. And if you can master that, your body is going to get a whole new stimulus, which is then going to spark uh, a change in your physique. Yeah. By, by the way, you, the, the, the results you're looking for are going to follow the strength gains. Okay, so if you see strength gains, you know the results that you mentioned earlier when we started this conversation are going to come. They're going to follow. So that your primary goal through this program is strength. Now, of course, perfect form. Make sure you control the weight. Don't sacrifice your form and technique for strength. But strength is your goal. If the strength isn't going up, look at your diet. Make sure you're feeding your body appropriately. And I see in your question, you didn't mention this, uh, but I, I'm reading your question here. You're getting ready to get married? In June? Yes, in June. Yep. Yeah, congratulations. So yeah, thank you. If, if you get stronger, if you do this right, and if you feed yourself properly, you'll also may find yourself getting leaner without even trying. Because as you start to build muscle, that body fat that you have on your body, the normal amount of body fat you have in your body actually becomes a smaller percentage of your body. So if I put eight pounds of, of just muscle on your body, you're not going to look bigger. You're just going to feel tighter. Things are going to lift. Right. You're going to feel sculpted. And you'll actually have a lower body fat percentage as a result, and I'm saying that because what some women do is they, they they start to get stronger, they start to oh my god I'm feeling good wow this is great, and then they start to get worried maybe I should may, uh oh I, I maybe I should start to cut my calories maybe I should start to lose weight don't worry about that you're you're at a good body fat percentage you the way you train before transition to maps anabolic your prime position to build strength and sculpt your body so focus on strength and you'll get all the results that you're looking for our, our programs are awesome. so good you should be able to carry your husband down the aisle. <laughs> we'll just, see just, we'll see <laughs> just saying <laughs> so yeah. awesome okay thank, thank you Jenna thanks for calling in yeah I appreciate it thanks guys you got yeah. it Oh, I kind of want to see that. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if we yeah, had, like, she it, sends a video? I know. Like, Yay. <laughs> what husband yeah. would want? Would let his, <laughs> I don't think he'd. Want I don't know that, these man. days, bro. I mean, you know just, what I'm yeah, these days, just these guys, these guys today, on video. These guys today, you know? Daddy, can you show us the wedding video? And would mom <laughs> carry like you? Pressing him over your <laughs> yeah. head. Yeah. You know, um, uh, I'm glad we get. So, you know, uh, when we have someone that age who, you know, obviously we did a good job. We convinced her to try something like this because usually at this age, you get away with just beating the shit out of your body and you don't figure it out till much later when your body's just not working anymore. Yeah. So if she does what we say, she's going to be blown away. She'll oh, yeah. be blown away by how her body responds. Yeah, yeah. It's, cra it's crazy. This is not the first time that we've had somebody who looks at anabolic and thinks the, the leg volume is low and I always trip out. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm like, yeah. that is not low at all. No. You'll see, we'll see what happens. But you know, you know who it is? 
it is the uh, the typically the female client who does supersets, who does jump lunges to side lunges to squats to yeah, like you know yeah. she does like ten leg stuff every yeah. every workout and they're all like supersetted Banded leg press yeah, yeah lightweight and you know it's like oh just just get strong so you're gonna have to tell this client again just constantly rest rest I know you th if you can go do it and you're tell talking to me thirty seconds later going oh I, I can do the next set Adam we didn't put enough weight on the bar. More weight on the bar then. More yeah. weight on the bar. If you if you feel like you're ready to go after 30 seconds, we're not pushing strength enough. That's the challenge. I mean, I get that a lot. Like it's just like put more weight on the bar. Like yep. if you're not being stimulated enough, that's the goal here. We mm -hmm. need to focus on that. Our next caller is Roberto from Florida. Roberto, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, how you doing? It's a pleasure to be on the show. Uh, I'm a long time listener. It's been like uh three, four years since I started listening, and you guys have helped me through uh Rough periods in, in, in life and enjoy and enjoy drives a lot more than I used to. Um, but uh, with that being said, uh, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about my background first. So um, I played baseball my entire life up to college level. I played in a D2 school. Um, I was a pitcher. Um, my family genes tend to lean a little towards uh, um, gaining weight very quickly. Um, my, my, my dad, my brother, my mother, they all um, um, have struggled during their lives with uh, obesity. They gain weight super easy, and uh, it, it's definitely my genes. Um, so when I was 15, um, I decided to start going to the gym with my dad to support him, um, and I thought it was going to be a good idea for me to develop for baseball. Um, we hired a trainer. He assessed me. He did all, you know, a typical, like, conditioning, strength, see where I was at, um, and we started developing um, my strength more than anything. Um, I always wanted a, a nice physique, you know, like every kid at 15 years old. Uh, but he, he, he told me and everybody would tell me, like, don't worry about the physique, worry about being strong, and that will translate onto the field. And, I mean, that really happened. Um, however, I did see, like, development in my, in my lower body, but not my upper body. I always had skinny arms, no chest, no nothing, but I had, like, thunder ties and, you know, typical baseball body. Um, I went on to play, you know, college baseball, and when I was in, in, in college, uh, during the fall season, we would train about three times a week, and we would do, like, the main movements, a lot of squatting, a lot of uh, reverse lunges, lunges, uh, deadlifting, RDLs, all that kind of stuff, um, and we did some powerlifting movements, like uh, like some some cleans, some hand cleans, some, some of that stuff. Uh, but nothing, nothing too crazy just to, you know, I, I guess work on, on strength and mobility and whatnot. Um, so after I was done with college baseball, it was the pandemic. Um, I was a senior. I got a call and be like, hey, season's canceled. You won't play baseball anymore. And that was like a tough hit. And, you know, the pandemic happened. I was, you know, straight at home. I couldn't go to the gym. I didn't have nothing to do. So I was like, all right, you know, let's let's start running. I fell in love with running and I didn't pay attention to what you guys said. And I just, you know, went up to running half marathons every Saturday, basically. I went from two, 215 pounds to 185. Um, and um, I, I thought I was feeling great. I was feeling good. But then, you know, life started back to normal. I went to work and I couldn't keep my uh, physical activity levels up. And in a matter of a month or two months, I gained back those 20 pounds. They, everything, like you guys have said in like previous podcasts, like I ate and it just stuck to my body. Like I just felt like I ate like a tortilla at home and it would just go straight into my belly. Um, but yeah, so then I decided to go to, to, go to law school for some reason. And um, to deal with the stress and everything, I, I, I was just like, okay, let me just invest some money. I got my MAPS uh, anabolic and I've, and you know, it changed me completely. Um, I, I, before starting it, I decided to go to a little cut. I went, uh, cause I had gained some weight. So I was at 205 when I started. And by the end of MAPS anabolic, I waited at 225 looking lean. My, my upper body developed like never in my life. Like nice looking shoulders, biceps, triceps, and everything. Um, so I was super into it, super happy with the results, and I said, "Okay, let's let's put it, uh, you know, a step forward." And I bought Maps Aesthetic, um, but I couldn't really finish it. I did like one stage, and I just couldn't. My body was just exhausted. The stress of law school, you know, increased. Finals, and then I started working at a law firm, 
and my schedule was super tight and I didn't have time. So every single time I went to the gym, I went once or twice in a week and then I was just done for one or two weeks. So I was wondering if you guys had any advice on how to deal with the stress of studying, working and having, you know, a little time to to still work out and, and enjoy it and, and see some development in my body. Yeah, good question. You know, we just came out with a program that might actually work really well for someone like you. Roberto, do you think it would be easier for you to do a short, like 15, 20 minute workout a day versus two or three hour workouts? Do you think it would be easier for you to find like 15, 20 minutes a day versus, you know, carving out an hour a few days a week? Yeah, casually, I was listening to that, to that episode yesterday and I was thinking, this sounds like something I would really enjoy because um, I think I could like wake up 20 minutes earlier, you know, get a, a get a workout in because I just got my I got a, my own home gym, so I could wake up, do 20 minutes, and if I'm feeling better, then come back at home, do another 10, 20 minutes, a couple other reps, and that feels like something that I, that I could enjoy more than putting an hour into yeah. a workout every day. It's just yeah. really hard. All right, I'm gonna send you Maps 15. There's two versions in there. One is with the suspension trainer. The other one's a little more advanced. It uses a barbell. So I'm going to send that to you because I think that'll work better for you. As far as the stress is concerned, you know, exercise is a stress on the body. So if your, if your life stresses go up, your body's ability to adapt to the, the stresses of exercise goes down. So you have to modify your workouts based on the context of your life. So your, your workouts need to improve the quality of your life, meaning as your life changes, so do your workouts have to necessarily change. Keeping the workouts the same all the time while life changes means that there's going to be periods where you're going to feel good and then there's going to be periods where you're going to burn out and you can't stick to it. MAPS aesthetic is way too much volume in, in a case like the one you're telling me. I think MAPS 15 would be perfect for you. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the challenge. You're going to feel really good and you're going to have a lot of energy doing MAPS 15 and you may have the, the, the following challenge where you say to yourself, ah, oh, I feel like I could do more. I feel like I could throw more at my body. I want you to fight that urge because what you don't want is you don't want to put, you don't want to feel exhausted all the time. What you should feel is energized all the time. If you feel energized all the time, then you know that your workouts are complementing your life. And what that means is you're going to get better results. You'll get better results ultimately over doing a workout that's too intense or too much volume. Okay. So we'll send that program. I think that'll be perfect for you. I really appreciate you guys for, for doing that. Um, and so fighting that urge is always an issue for me because I was built with that athlete mentality of yep. going the extra mile, you know? Yep, yep, so yep. it's hard to find that medium point of being, okay, I feel good enough towards like, I know I work today or, oh no, I'm just being so lazy today and I'm just, yeah. you know, quitting early. Like how do you find that, that, that mindset, man? The goal is always, it. the goal is always to do the least amount possible to elicit the most amount of change. So the goal, you, that's how you have to think every time you go on a workout. I'm going to try and do as least amount possible to elicit the most amount of change. So in other words, there's a sweet spot, right? Mm -hmm. There's a sweet spot there. And now, now the athletic mentality uh, that you that you learn playing sports, where you push yourself beyond the point that Adam just said, has value in competition, right? right? And war, and, and, and war. Like so, so we'll we'll interview uh, you know people who were soldiers, for example. And they'll talk about the training that they went through. The training in the military, for example, or in high-level sports, part of it is to get your body ready, but a lot of it is to get your mind ready. Yeah. Because when you're in battle or when you're in a in a in a competition, you're not you're not I'm not competing to maximize my body's recovery and adaptation. Like, I'm trying to win, right? And oftentimes the side that wins is the side that can persevere and push through. You know, when your body and your brain are telling you lay down and give up, right? But this is not what we're talking about. What we're talking about right now is your life, yeah. your lifestyle. In fact, you're going to law school right now. So why don't you can apply that towards law school? Because I know I look, I have family members that are lawyers, and I know when they went to law school and what that looked like. And a lot of that is very mental. A lot of that is very challenging. So the way you got to look at your workouts for most of your life, there's going to be periods of time when you could take your workouts and push yourself and, and, and challenge the mental aspect and there's value there. But the majority of the time, your workouts need to improve the quality of your life. And if you're constantly pushing your limits with your workouts, then you, you're probably going to be compromising the quality of your life, especially if you do it all the time. You can still utilize that same mindset. You just have to 
push it more towards being disciplined about doing this to the point where it's going to benefit you. So now think of it as you're, you're, you're trying to figure out that ultimate, um, optimization in terms of like how your body is going to, you know, thrive going forward. So I had to, to redirect and reframe this a lot, being an ex athlete, uh, coming in, what's going to be best for my body. Now I have to be disciplined about now finding that sweet spot. I do think I can do more, but now I have to change that mentality of, you know, more is better and more intensity. And, you know, I have to, I have to like, you know, go through this, this, this crazy workout to be able to get any benefit, which is not true. That's not benefiting you anymore because of your life stress and everything else that you're, you've accumulated. So now it's just like, you know, taking that same type of athlete mentality and applying it towards like, this is the plan. Now I, I love, I love coaching athletes. Just, you just need to shift your competitiveness. Stop being competitive with your workouts and trying to beat the shit out of yourself. Be competitive with your sleep routine. Be competitive with your diet. Be, be competitive with your recovery. Like, get, get competitive with those things. Don't get competitive with, can I, can I kick my ass inside the gym all the time? Do that. It's just hard because, you know, I, I like that feeling of, you know, get, get having weight in the bar, you know? And then sometimes when I feel like, okay, this is maybe lightweight, I just try to like, I like that feeling of uh, feeling, I guess, powerful in yeah, a way. I'm, not, sure. I'm sure you guys can relate. So yeah. it's just hard to listen, keep myself back to listen, it. Listen, um, you're, you're talking to three guys who struggle <laughs> with this all the time. Uh, we, we work out all the time. This is yeah. my constant battle. But look, there's the right dose of exercise. The right dose is the one that gets you the most, the best results. And then there's the most that your body can tolerate. Those are two different things. There's how much you can tolerate. Healing or adapting. And then there's also what's going to give you the best results. And there's a little bit of value in sometimes pushing yourself to what you can tolerate. But what you're what you're saying right now and the way you're describing your lifestyle, I think you need to train more often right now in the right dose. And the sound and the right dose feels like this. I have a lot of energy. Man, I feel really good. I feel energized. My joints feel good. This is awesome. That's where you need to feel. What you don't want to feel right now is man, I feel like I just survived a battle. Oh my God, I crawled out of the gym. Like, yeah, every once in a while that's a good feeling, but you do that enough times and the rest of your life, the quality of your life is going to go down. You're not going to be able to go, you know, go to school the way you want right. to go to school. And then you'll find yourself skipping the gym or your performance will start to decline. You actually start to lose the progress that you gain. Plus, it'll probably open up again. This is a season of life that's different. So just you know, treat it that way, you know, going forward, you might have a completely different scenario in terms of your environment, like where you can get after it a little bit uh, more intensively. And that's totally fine. Uh, just right now you have to be smart. I appreciate you guys. And before I leave, what would you guys recommend in terms of eating? Would I, would you, would, should I try to just maintain, like, I know, like I, I maintain you should like 2,600 calories. That's like my, my maintenance level. I'm, I feel a little like, uh, overweight, a little chubby right now. I would like to cut down, get a little lean. Should I go on a bulk or should I try to cut down my you know, calories I, with this new program? I think if you trained properly and stayed at maintenance, you may see your body composition change a little bit. You can go on a little cut, but I'd be careful with that because cutting is also a bit of a stress on the body. So you can do that. Um, and the way I would do it is I would do like these mini, these these short periods of of a cut followed by maintenance. So you know, 2,400 calories for a few weeks, then go back up to 26 or 2,700 calories for a few weeks. So just kind of make it a slow process. So you don't over stress your body while you're doing all the stuff that you're trying to do right now. All right. Perfect. I appreciate you guys. You got it, man. We'll send you maps 15. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. All right, man. Yeah. So, you know, he, you know, I, let me ask you guys a question. What, was harder for you to train in terms of getting the person to to adhere? Was it the ex hardcore athlete who then later on became like a dad or a mom or whatever and you know business person, mm -hmm. or was it the like the beginner who like never worked out? Yeah, well, I I would say the athlete, but I, I would say more specifically like the type A person, yeah. right? That just wants to put everything on their shoulders all at once. So hard to talk them out of doing everything at once is really difficult. And when you have that gear that you you that skill of the like pushing yourself, it's so hard to not be in that gear all the time. You know, when I would train people who were athletes like that, it was like constantly like pulling them back, pulling them back, pulling them back. You know, we got to do a little less, a little less right now. This is not, uh, you know, you're not, you know, D1 football right now, or you're not, you know, doing what you were doing before. It can be really challenging. I, I love these clients. Um, in fact, 
most of my career, this is what I focused on was type A, yeah. high performing executives, athletes. Like I was terrible with, you know, kids and, and, and I didn't do the advanced age very well. Like that was not my jam. I love this because what you have to do with someone like this is you just got to get them because what they have incredible discipline mm -hmm. and, and they're, they're highly motivated people. You just got to get them to shift away from what they have trained themselves to focus on for so long. That's the challenge. The hurdle is that he's convinced himself that he loves that feeling. He's convinced himself that this is, this is what gives me good results. When I trained hard for my sport, I got this. It's just like, okay, if I can just get you to be that way and get competitive with the, your sleep routine or get competitive yeah. with how you recover just or, get, it, right? or, yeah, or mm -hmm. get competitive with your diet. And that, and so that's all I'm speaking to. Like I'm not, I'm not even going to waste my time really talking a lot about getting after it in the workout. I'm going to, I'm going to hold him accountable every day. I see him on those things. And when, and then I'm going to talk shit to him, which is what I love about someone who's like a high performing athlete that you can kind of talk shit. Like, yeah. don't come at me with your, I don't care about your workout that you're adding weight right now. You can't yeah. even get your sleep routine. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to push them and push that athletic mindset in the areas that I think are going to serve him best. And so once you could get them to make that switch, then they're very successful. They just got to get out of that mindset of beating themselves up at the gym is what's serving them. Our next caller is Michael from Maryland. Michael, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to answer my question. Uh, first off, I got to do the thing. I got to thank you guys for everything you do. Um, you provide an invaluable service to the space. So thank you for that. Um, so my question is in regards to my mother. Um, she's 66 and she wants to start getting into strength training um, for her health as well as her, as well as her quality of life. Um, I'm proud of her for that decision and I want to help her reach that goal. Um, so she came to me for advice. I, I like to think I know what I'm doing. I've been in the fitness journey for a while, but I don't know enough about that topic, hence why I'm coming to you guys. Um, so she's mentioned that she wants to get a personal trainer from any gym close by. And I kind of warned her in a way, like, hey, don't just get any trainer. They may not have the best experience with that uh, that age group, or they may go too intense or too hard. And I don't want her to get injured or lose, you know, get discouraged right away because how intense it is. Um, so my question really is, do you guys have um, any recommendations or best approach for her situation? Or do you guys have a program um, that you would think would be best for her to really help her get all the benefits of strength training. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll send you, I'll send you, I think map starter, yes. uh, which would yeah. be a great program. Yes. That being said, Michael, um, nothing is going to be better than a really good trainer or instructor. But what's cool is that he, you haven't hired the trainer yet. So I love when we catch somebody before, because yeah. then what I would do is we're going to give you that program. When right. she goes into the gym, that's part of the deal of, of me hiring you. So in other words, like she is that we got to follow starter and because you're paying right. money, because here's what's tough. If you already have a trainer, like people listen to our show and they're like, oh, I hired this trainer for six months and they're, they're doing this and you guys say this and it doesn't seem like it li aligns. So how do you think I could give them your program? And no, that never works. They yeah. get all pissed and it, because they've already, the contract's already been done, but you walking into it or having, or helping her walk into the situation say, here's the deal. I, I want my I want my grandmother to go through this this training program. This is mom. Oh, sorry, your mom. I want my mom to go through this training program, and I've already purchased it. Can you can you, can I hire someone that will help her follow it? And if you present it like that, then the and by the way, when you go to a gym, ask for the manager. So go directly mm. to the manager. Ex yeah, explain right. explain exactly what you're explaining to us, and say hey, I'm looking for someone who's going to take care of my mom. And who's your best trainer? And I have a program I want there. I want them to follow. Can I talk to them or can I hire them? And then and then you'll be yeah. fine, dude. Michael, I I had uh, the pleasure of working with a, an exceptional physical therapist, um, and she did really really good job working with people in this age group. And then later on, this became something that I became specialized in. And one of the the learning curves that I had to go through was realizing that you know resistance training really is just working against resistance, meaning. It doesn't have to be weights or machines. It could even be just body weight. Like for example, you could you could test your mom out with like this. Okay, can she stretch? Can she reach directly above her head with her arms without having to arch her back, where her arm is right next to her ear? Well, if she can't, one resistance training exercise may be to really just try to reach and extend her arm. To give you an example, right? Another example would be, you know, hey mom, let's have you stand up from a chair and then slowly. Just try to sit down. So you don't fall down in the chair, but you're controlling descent. The other thing that I learned was the the intensity required 
to elicit change is very low in somebody that's deconditioned and older. Like anything above and beyond what she's used to is going to elicit change. Your mom should not get sore after her workouts, or if she does, it should be very minimal. Okay, so if, you're, if your mom comes home from a workout, it's like, oh my God, I'm so sore in my legs. They went a little too hard. And it's it's better to err to air on the side of easier than it is to kind of overdo it, especially when you're dealing with someone uh, in this particular uh, case. Now, here's the questions that I would ask the the the, co the trainer that you're you're you know looking for for your mom. How many right. people do you work with that are in advanced age? Um, do you do you have any uh, correctional exercise experience or certification or education? Those are two very important things because those people people have lots of experience working with people over the age of sixty, people who really understand correctional exercise. They're going to approach training your mom properly. Even if they use MAP Starter, a trainer could train your mom too hard with MAP Starter. They could push the intensity too hard with her right, right. out the gates. So even though the exercises may be appropriate, they may use uh, an inappropriate level of intensity for your mom. Your mom should leave the workout feeling good, not like she got beat up. Well, and essence. you could call the GM or the or the fitness manager of that gym and literally ask that exact question to them and say, "Who's your trainer with the yeah, most experience the with the most experience with advanced age? Who has the who's a correctional specialist or physical therapist background? Do you have one?" And then whoever they recommend, then you go in and meet them and then do exactly what I said with the map starter thing and you should be fine. Yeah, and I, I, you know, literally 2 days a week for your mom would be fine. Even one day a week, she would start to see lots of strength gains and then move to two days a week. And then beyond that, she wouldn't need a whole lot more aside from like additional activity like walking and stuff like that. So, Gotcha. She already actually does that. She walks every day a couple miles. Um, but yeah, I, I, she's starting to get into that resistance training aspect. And, um, you know, it's funny you mentioned all the, uh, you know, like the, the sit downs and get ups or holding something over her head. I did actually have her start to do that um, and see kind of her mobility and her mobility is not that great. Um, so I guess a follow-up question to that would be like, you know, would you recommend maybe starting just with like Prime or Prime Pro to get her range of motion ready for starter? Or do you think starter is, is, you know, a beginner enough level that she could kind of just jump into that and take it no, slow? So, so here's what a good trainer will do, right? A good trainer will look at starter and modify it to fit your mom. So to give an example, let's say one of the exercises is a seated overhead press with dumbbells. Well, if your mom can't extend her arms over her head with no weight, well, guess how we're going to do the, the the seated press? No weight. Right. I'm going to have you hold your hands out with no weight and then lift your arms up and try to straighten your arms out without overarching your back. And that becomes the exercise, right? Let's say it's a it's a seated row. Well, when we're doing the row, if if she can't pull her shoulders back very well without resistance, well, I'm going to add the most minimal resistance. I'm going to give like a, a really light band. And then I'm going to focus on that end point where I'm really squeezing the shoulder blades back. So a yeah, good trainer right. will be able to take that and modify it to fit your mom. And a bad trainer will take that of, of mobility exercises. Yeah. So that, that's the thing. That's that's kind of where you need the coaching to come in. And you're, you're hoping that you have somebody with experience to be able to spot those things out. So then they yeah. could, you know, take some of those things that they notice in terms of imbalances or uh, dysfunction and be able to work on that and, and have that something that she can incorporate on days that they don't meet um, and then also still work uh, progressing forward towards learning how to, to properly resistance train. So, um, you know, really that's going to amount to to the right coach fit. Yeah, you should be able to find a trainer that has a, either a physical therapy background or a correction, correctional exercise specialist background and five years and experience, experience working with, people yeah, with advanced age. And they're, they're going to do a good job of that. They're going to see, they're, no, no one with that experience is going to see her do a shoulder press and then make her keep doing it. Yeah. They'll see it and be like, oh, we're going to have to do this instead. We'll do some corrective work. So, yeah, that's what that, I mean. You ask that question of a, yeah. a GM at, or a, an FM at a uh, at a, your local gym, and you should be able to find. There's normally at least one or two really solid trainers. In but your gym. your thought with that is correct. I would personally use Prime, you know, for those instances, you know, to to navigate through that as a coach and a trainer. I would utilize that, and then also in conjunction, you know, run her through Starter. Yeah. Right. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. And uh, thank again. Thanks again for everything you guys do. You guys are awesome. Man. You got thank it, Michael. You. We'll good send luck, you a match starter. Yeah. Let us know how your mom does. Yeah. You're a good boy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Good boy. Thank you. <laughs> that's good stuff. Yeah. This, this became, uh, yeah, I've said this a million times. This became my favorite age group to train because, you know, it, it's life changing to have someone lose 30 pounds. It's life changing to see somebody build their butt or their biceps. But it is more than life changing to get somebody who's, 
70 years old to come in and say, Don't lie. I that's could reach that's not above the main reason why you liked it. The main reason why you like it is because the conversation. The well, converse, that, well, that's the, the, the selfish wisdom. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the other part. Yeah, yeah. That, but I mean, listen. Because that's the part I did like. I uh, love the conversations with my 65 plus year old because yeah. of all the wisdom that yeah. they have. But I mean, did you ever have one come in and say, I went up the stairs today. Yeah. Or I could actually a, lift something and put it on the top shelf and it was like transformative. That is like yeah. a huge, like your independence. That's a that's a really big deal. Well, and, but uh, you're right. The conversations, the wisdom. I mean, I used to ask them all kinds of questions and it was like, man, you're paying me for me to learn yeah, yeah. <laughs> from you. This is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It's a good time. Look, if you like Mind Pump, go to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important. And that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.